Okay, so um, what we are doing today is to uh, go further on, uh, on our part, Python uh, experience. And uh, the idea is to uh, exploit part of the code we developed uh, in the last lesson uh, as a module and to use that part uh, for uh, building some simple program that uh, drives different networks together as a single system, okay? So the idea is to provide some sample for uh, what is so-called uh, interoperation. That means uh, making different devices work together as a single system. Um, the goal for our lesson is to understand and start learning how to do that by using Python and by exploiting uh, the system we have uh, at hand. So basically the U and uh, the several APIs with uh, the dog gateway installed upon them. And uh, um, the other idea is to also mix up uh, automation, home automation with other technologies like for example Twitter as we already did, or uh, like uh, the text-to-speech of Google as we already did. Uh, we almost know all uh, evolved technologies and the idea of today is to try bridging everything and build a single system with all the ingredients we already seen in the last lessons. Um, so, uh, let's start with our first goal. Um, forgive me for uh, the poor fantasy. Uh, the title is Say Power. So we want to build uh, basically a system that monitors the energy consumption of uh, some device. In our case, it will be two lamps. Okay, one desk lamp, one uh, ceiling lamp just mounted here on a cable. Um, we want to compute the, monitor the consumption uh, at a given rate, for example, every one second. Uh, compute the uh, total consumption, so we monitor both lamps, we sum up the consumption of both lamps. The two lamps are connected to two different networks. So one is connected on a, on a ZigBee network, the other is connected on a, a Z-Wave network. And we want to get information from both networks and sum up the consumption. And when the consumption differ from the last uh, samples that we read by more than 10 watts, the idea is to uh, say, pay attention, something changing in the power consumption because uh, we have a variation of more than 10 watts. Um, I'm already uh, warning you that actually uh, the code we will develop will not work at all completely, let's say, today because we, I lack connection, connectivity to both the bench and the internet. Uh, the only way to do that is to have uh, both the wireless uh, and wired connector all together working, but actually I tried a few seconds ago and only one of the two can be used at a time. I cannot use uh, them uh, uh, at the same time, uh, one connecting to the, to the other, no? So probably the text-to-speech won't work, uh, but it's just a matter of connectivity. If, you, if we have, uh, for example, uh, a cable network plugged on our uh, Wi-Fi access point that they give access to the internet, it works. So just a warning for today. Um, let's start thinking about designing this, this thing, this system, okay? Because actually, until now, we just almost provided the solution directly, okay? We said this is the problem, this is the way to solve the problem. Uh, no much thinking about how to solve the problem. And since uh, the next uh, deliverable you are expected to the deliver uh, uh, is the logic architecture and the requirements for your project, uh, we can start thinking and, start and try to build a logic architecture also for the system just to understand how to do that. Um, so first, uh, uh, what are the main components of our system? We Basically, we already set up the requirements uh, by just reading this simple slide, but uh, if you want to uh, identify what are the main modules and to uh, represent them. Basically, we, we can start a very, uh, from a very rough uh, uh, description where we had the fields, which are the plugs uh, and the lamps. And then we have our system, okay? 
And then we will have also two other main blocks. Uh, one is, for example, in this case, the Google text-to-speech, which is an external service, which, and the connection to this service is mediated by an internet connection, okay? And the other module that we may have is some middleware, something that enable us to uh, connect to different networks in a more easy way. We can directly connect to the networks. In that case, we don't have any middleware, or we can just use a middleware for bridging up the networks at a low level, okay? So these are the main components. And if we try to write them down into a kind of a schema, this can be the logic architecture of our solution, where we have the fields here with the, with the plugs. We have one plug connected to the ZB network, one to the Z-Wave. Then we have a middleware. In our case, we have dog installed, so we can exploit it. But if we have another middleware, it's okay, it's the same. Then we have a, what is called the home area network, which is the network la connecting all the devices in a given environment. It might be a building, it might be a, an home. In the, in the case of home, it's named usually home area network, okay? In a building, it, it may become a wide area network, but anyway, it's a, a kind of either wireless or wired connection that uh, permits to hold devices to communicate together in a closed environment. Then, behind this home area network, we have also a connection to the internet that enables us to exploit other services, for example, the Google text-to-speech. So this, in general, could be the architecture where our module, our uh, system, has to interact with both the middleware through the home area network and the text-to-speech through the internet, okay? And if we're gonna go further a little bit and try to uh, detail a little bit more the, our uh, system before starting to write any code, uh, we can try to explode this block, okay? And look inside and uh, try to figure out what are the modules that we need. It's quite easy. We almost have all uh, these modules because we already did almost the, the work in the next in the last lessons but anyway we can start thinking of a structure like this one where we have a base layer which is the red one which I, which is our very simple rest client that we developed in the last lesson okay and this is the one who, who basically enables us to uh, send a request to the to the dog the gateway or directly to the to the bridges of uh, the single networks. Inside the REST client, actually, we are also using uh, a web client, which somewhat can be uh, mapped to the uh, wget call that we make for uh, getting the TTS from Google, okay? So, uh, in general, the base layer could be named the connectivity in a sense, REST client and simple HTTP client, and then, on top of this base layer, we can start building our modules. Actually, we already built both, okay? One is a, a dog client, something that is able to speak with dog and to send to the dog gateway some comments and receive the responses. And the other is a TTS client that does almost the same with the Google TTS service. So we are providing a kind of abstraction of functionalities, uh, providing a building blocks upon which we develop our core. In this case, the core that we are going to develop is just a set of Python instructions that basically exploit the, the two clients for querying the gateway uh, about the current consumption and depending on the result, querying the TTS service for getting back the MP3 file to play and say, okay, the consumption changed by more than X, okay? So this is a, a very simple example of the uh, design process, starting from a very high level logic architecture and trying to go down. And the difficult part, of course, is this one, when we try to unpack uh, a black box and, and to see what are the components inside. And in this case, it was uh, very simple because actually we already did almost all the modules and actually I, I already did the design process beforehand, so I, I'm just, telling to you how the result is, but uh, we didn't perform anything inside uh, inside this class, okay? So when uh, we are going to do the same on your project, of course, this, this phase will take a little bit 
more time because you need to think about the problem and see what and how the modules can be structured or can be organized into this architecture. But the process is almost the same. Okay, so say that we have defined all the modules and we have uh, most of uh, the code already uh, available. Um, let's try to develop the core part, okay? While for both the clients, um, you can uh, have a look on uh, the GitHub project of today, uh, for which the pointer is at the end of the slide and uh, you can find it on, uh, on our repository on GitHub. Um, so that we can basically assume that the clients, all the clients are already given and we can only concentrate on, uh, on the core part, okay? So let's start developing. Uh, let me switch to Eclipse. Let's do it here so that I already have the dependencies. Okay, let's first have a look, very quick look. I just packed all the, we did in the last lesson in the different modules. So we have uh, a REST module, which is our base layer, that basically is the same file that we created in the last uh, lesson, okay? Then we have also another dog module, which is the client. It's a little bit more complicated than the, the very simple guy that we created the last, in the last lesson, but actually it per, what it provides is basically a structured way for sending comments. So instead of just writing URLs and uh, filling up JSONs to send, we, we got methods uh, that enable us to just uh, say, okay, send command and the command is on. So just a couple of uh, wrapping things around uh, the base layer that we developed last uh, lesson. I, and I don't want to go in uh, inside details of this because actually we don't have plenty of time for doing that. Um, and the same you have uh, uh, for the TTS. In that case, the TTS module is exactly the same we developed together. So uh, on the repository, you don't find uh, the TTS module because actually it's the same of the, of the other uh, uh, in-class uh, exercise. And let's try to develop, yeah, let me check. Yes, we have time. Let's try to develop from scratch the core, okay? So that we exploit the modules and build up just the core. So we can develop a new a module. Can you, should I enlarge the text because it's tiny or can you read it? Yes, okay. Okay, let's name this, uh, say power, we call it. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so um, first, we said that uh, we need uh, to interact with the, with the dog gateway. Let me enlarge because I see someone of you, some, some of you Shrinking eyes, trying to read. Um, okay, that should be better. Um, so we, we want to query the gateway for getting the energy consumption, okay? And one more information I could give you is that actually we don't have a single gateway here because we decided to uh, deploy different gateways, each one taking just one technology because we have three PIs there and uh, in that case we can handle, we can better handle uh, cases where uh, multiple groups need to work on the same technology, okay? So in practice we have here one PI with the one dog gateway running uh, the Z-Wave drivers, basically, and the other PI is running the Zigbee drivers. So we have to drive two different gateways, but actually they have the same API. So what we need to start first is to build the clients. We have the modules already there, and we saw the very quickly dog module, the TTS module. We start creating, instantiating these modules inside our core. So the first part is to prepare for uh, the two gateways. 
So let's write a comment here. Um, Delegate. Okay. Um, let's call this uh, dog Z wave, as we want to point to the to the dog instance uh, connected to the Z wave protocol. And to do that, we can exploit some class which is defined in the dog client, and that's why I was saying that there is a, bit, a little bit of work on it. Uh, it is not just as the plain client we developed uh, on the last lesson. But before doing that, we need to import the client. So uh, you can write from uh, dog import dog gateway, okay. And here we can create a new dog gateway instance in this way. And what we need to identify the gateway is basically to provide the URL of the gateway, okay? So URL is HTTP 192.168.0.1.0.2. Um, then since we just want to access the dog gateway, not, not uh, the server running on the, on the PI. What we need to, to provide is the complete URL, the, the IP address. So we need also to provide the port and the API address, which is API version one. Okay, and that's it. So here we created the client towards the first dog. And if you remember in the, in the inner architecture of our system, we have the client that needs to speak with all uh, the devices we want to interface. We want also to interface the Zigbee devices, which are on another gateway. So let's also create the gateway for interfacing the, the, the Zigbee part. So create, let's call it here Z-Wave. Z-Wave and here the Zigbee. Gateway delegate, and we can call it dog zb. And this will be dog gateway, and the address is almost the same apart from the last number of the IP address, which is three instead of two. Okay. Okay. So. Um, at this point, we created the two clients towards the field, towards the dog gateway. Um, first thing we have to do is to start measuring the consumption, because we need to check if the consumption changes, and when the consumption changes by more than 10 bucks, we want to say something to the user. Uh, in our case today, we just print something because uh, the TTS won't work. But, um, before starting to, to read in the power, we need to make sure that, that there is some power consumption, because otherwise we will get always zero. So let's try first to light up the lights connected to the gateways, and then we start measuring so that we have some consumption. And um, I'm simplifying the, the problem for today because actually uh, we already know, I already know the identifiers of these two flags because in theory, you don't know the, the identifier, so you need to check it by connecting, for example, uh, directly to the gateway and looking at the devices available or by just iterating the data that you can query on the game. But in our case, just for, for the sake of simplicity, let's assume that we already know the, the ID of the devices. So what we, uh, we need to do is to send a command to each device uh, to tell the device to switch on, okay? So to send a command, we exploit the client and um, on command to both plugs. Okay, so our first plug is on the first gateway. So we use the first gateway, uh, dog z-wave dot send command. 
And device ID, it's uh, uh, metering our outlet six, if I'm not wrong. Um, and the command will be on, if you remember, okay? No parameters, because we don't have to send anything apart just the name of the command. Okay, so this instruction basically wraps um, the query that we sent last, uh, on in the last lesson, which was a much more complex query. Basically, it was an HTTP request, a put HTTP request with an empty body. This method, basically, this function wraps up uh, that request in a simpler way. And the same can be done on the ZigBee part. And commands. Uh, the idea of, devi of the device is different. It's let me have a look here because it's a really, really long. Um, metering power outlet um, 378 or one. And no parameter. Okay. So by, by, by just executing this two instruction, if everything goes well, uh, in theory, we just uh, uh, should be able to turn on the lamps, okay? That's right. Why is this taking so much? Okay. If the developing environment enable us to do that. Um, Thank you so much. Uh, let me just try to disable this one. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, just a second for it. <laughs> Sometimes get blocked. I don't know why. Um, let me check. Okay, no route lost, perfect. Let me check the IP configuration. So here the error is just, we, are aim, we aren't able to connect to the gateways. Actually one is down. I don't know why, probably. The plug is not. Well connected. Let me change it. This way. Okay, now everything should seems to be working. Let's just wait a second for, for everything to start because actually the plug wasn't very well plugged. Um, and we can check if the gateway comes up just pinging it. One is up. At least uh, it responds to the internet, and the other seems also up. Let us check first. Also, the gateway is up because we need the gateway for interacting with the lights. And usually, it takes a while for uh, for starting.
it is still starting, you see here. No information means basically that the gateway is still booting up. So let's just give it time. Check. Okay, it's coming up, you see here. It is slowly loading everything. It's bringing up all the modules it has, and like it takes a while at the first time, so it should be nearly there. Uh, okay, we, we got the first device active, and then three, five, six. Okay, this one is okay. This should be here. Okay, and this is where I got the the identifier of the of the plug basically. Okay, you see. So if it works, we can just try to switch it on. It is still loading, so it may take a while. Okay. This one is working. So. Okay. Right, this is not starting. Okay, one is working and the other might be some problem. Okay, let, let's check the, the script at this point. Problems. Okay, today we are unlucky, basically. It's also 17, <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, um, okay. 
بهترین بس This one, the other is not working because actually it seems that the gateway is not working. Uh, that's why I was a bit worried, but uh, anyway. You see here, this red part means that actually the, the key is not connecting to the, to the plug. So, but anyway, we can do the same. Just with, with just one plug and then maybe restart this part. Uh, let, me, let me just restart the server to see if something changes or not. Um, SSH, okay, 192. These are exactly the one you have in the lab, you will have in the lab, so um, this is a way for accessing the devices. And Actually, um, Neither of the two. I, I think the problem is that um, they have been up for a, for a very long time, and then we just turned them down today for, for moving everything. And probably um, the networks need to be rebuilt in that case, because uh, these are wireless networks, and when the controller goes down, everything needs to be redone. So that at the first startup, they are uh, quite slow. Then a part of that, the gold gateway takes a while for uh, for starting up at the first uh, first run, because because there are some components which are quite heavy. Basically, there is one rule engine that takes a couple of seconds, nearly a minute for starting. So, okay. So let me just check. Um, Just uh, restarting the Zigbee part. In the meanwhile, we can go over, okay? And we can try to read the consumption of the lamp, since we have a lamp which is on. Um, to read the consumption, what we need to do is to uh, get the status of the device and then parse the JSON file that we get back and uh, look for the power entry, okay? So to get the status, we just perform another uh, command to the gateway, and the command is get status. So um, we can use uh, our client. We get the device status. Okay. And uh, in between quotes, possibly. Once we get the status, we need to uh, access the power field. Um, I give you the solution, but actually <laughs> it's, uh, it can be driven by just reading JSON and looking at the, at the field. The solution is um, status. Let's store this in a status object. And Um, position status, and then it's at the position uh, single phase. 
power state. Okay, active power. Document. This is a, all uh, documented on the API docs, so you can get it. Uh, on zero. And yeah, we need to get the value. And um, okay, let's just print this to see what we get back, and then we do this next step. Okay. Okay, forty-five watts, but. If we want to check this number here, 45, uh, we cannot use the entire uh, string that we, that we get back because it's a string. So we need to cut out the, the W or the VAT uh, unit to measure and convert the resulting string into a number and then check it against our threshold, okay? So uh, for cutting out the, the, the latest uh, W, uh, what we need to do is to just apply a substring here, right in minus one, that means the, the last character, basically. Um, and then we need to convert this status into a number. And to do that, we just use the float uh, operator. So we set, you type here, float. Okay, and this basically converts uh, the string into a floating point number. Okay, you can see print it and we should get 45.0 only. Okay, perfect. And um, now what we need to do is to do the same for the ZP part, even if it doesn't work uh, at the moment, but in principle it's the same. So we can just copy the same code. And here we can start thinking about some way to do it better. And um, just change the identifier. For the block. And that's it. Yep, ZB, sorry. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay, 0, 0.0 in this case. Maybe it's, uh, it is still not working, maybe, but. Yeah. It seems still not working, but actually uh, it provides a default value for the state, so we can still get some information even if the plug doesn't work because we don't have the gateway. Then I will check why. Um, actually, Zigbee networks have, with these adapters, have some more problems than the other because they tend to uh, break the network if you uh, just uh, make some device disappear because, for example, you left some device elsewhere. I just left two plugs, so the network is different, so everything is down, and I'm basically what the, we should do is to destroy the network manually and rebuild it. And that's a problem of the network, of the ZB network. On the Z-Wave, you see there's no, there's no issue at this point. Um, but anyway, okay, we got the status, and we got the corresponding values. Now what we want to do is to sum up the power, okay, and then check it against the threshold. So, for summing up the power, we need to trace the power to store the power in some variable. So let's substitute the print with our variable. Let's call it power uh, Z-wave, for example. And the other will be power ZB. Okay. And. If we want to sum up the consumption, I get the, the total consumption. We just have to compute the total power. So total power will be equal to power Z wave plus power 
Okay. And now we can also print it, maybe in a little bit more structured way. So print, um, for example, total power. Touch the variables values that will be um, power z wave power b and total power okay and if we run it we get forty five okay and now we can threshold this power for checking if it changes by more than 10 watts. And to threshold this, we just need to write a conditional construct and say, okay, if um, total power, yeah, but uh, probably we need to um, store the latest information, otherwise we cannot check the threshold, okay? So let's prepare here. Um, let's prepare it at the beginning, just a variable, and we can call it power peak, for example, equal to zero. Okay, so initially it's zero, and then we can say if total power is less than power peak <coughs> minus five. If we want to have 10 watts as a, as a range, or total power greater than power peak plus five, Let's just print here, um, let's say warning, just threshold five uh, with a three. Okay, just a warning, nothing. Okay, and it's true at the beginning because actually it's zero. Now. To complete our worker, what we need to do is to cycle. That's it. So to keep checking for our new power measures. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. We need to first devise the, the cycle and then inside the cycle update the power peak. So the cycle starts before uh, reading the status because we need to read the status every time. So just before we write here for, uh, Let's decide that we just uh, take some finite number of samples because actually here we can put uh, just while true and keep it forever or we can just check 20 times uh, the power and then exit. It's the same. So let's make it simple. For I range, say 20 and one, okay. All this part should be identified. Okay. Um, and now we need to also update the power peak. So power peak will be equal to This is not actually a power peak. It, it, it is just the last power value. So it is better maybe to change the name of the variable if you want. So this can be uh, last power or last total power. Just to make it more readable. And to change this and this. This one, 
Okay. And let's try to, if we just leave it like this, it will play very, very quickly. Okay, because there is no waiting between each cycle. So maybe we need to put a slip and wait for a bit just for taking a sampling, a sample which is uh, significant because we give some time for, uh, for the consumption to change. So let's import also the time library, time module. And here we can sleep for a while. So time sleep, for example, one second. And if we run it, you see this. The other times, nothing changes because we, we reached a steady state, basically. Um, okay, and it works for 10, for 20 seconds. But, okay, let's wait uh, to, to finish. And then we can restart it and try to manually switch on the lamp so that we can see that something happens and the threshold should be passed uh, uh, another time. So it starts. Then at some point we decide to, and you see here, the power changes and we get another warning. And if we restart the lamp back, and we are lucky. Okay, I program ended, sorry. <laughs> okay, but if we just uh, try to enlarge a bit uh, the number of cycles just for playing with it, we got, okay, now it is down. And so this is the latency of the detection between the actual uh, lamp uh, shutting down and the um, measure get gathered by the gateway. And if we get back here, there should be almost five seconds, which is the polling time for the gateway. You see, here 47, in this case, the lamp consumes a little bit more, and then it goes down. So the, this is a kind of uh, transitory start that depends on the lamp, of course. This is really easy, but actually, if we put there something different, uh, the consumption, of course, changes. And if we want to integrate the TTS service, we can do it, even if it doesn't work because we don't have the connection, but it is really simple. We just need to type here, import TTS, okay. And here, together with printing, we can say TTS dot say text um, power is now, for example, Power and language should be English. In this way, we got the TTS. And of course, if I run it, we get an error because we don't have connection. Exactly. Because it, it is trying to get the MP3 file back and uh, Nothing happens, so you need to wait for uh, you need to wait uh, for the timeout to expire. For uh, in that case, wget will end up we will get back an error and so. Okay, but this will be the solution if we have the connectivity. Okay, um, perfect. Then, what if we want to also measure? Uh, the power if we turn off the device in between. in between. It is quite easy. Basically, what we need is to repeat the same steps uh, after sending a different command, okay? So either I can just put here, for example, just a flag like this, if high equal to 15, case I will be turning down the, the lamp after 15 seconds. So let me command this, otherwise it doesn't work. Okay. 
In this case, I just decided to send an off command at, in the middle, basically, of the, of the checking cycle to, to cause a variation automatically and, uh, and get it back, the result. So if you imagine to have this really simple script running continuously on, on your server, that might be the API or whatever, and monitoring the power, you can get a basic feedback, a basic feedback on the power consumption, okay? This is really, really basic, just saying something changes, but if you connect uh, this event instead uh, of, the, uh, of using the TTS uh, uh, server, you use the U lamps, for example, you can just change the lamps color depending on the consumption. And it actually will be uh, the next step. And in this case, since we don't have uh, much time uh, uh, before uh, off past uh, 15, uh, we can just have a look at the code without writing because we already have the solution and uh, we concentrate only on the, on the architecture. So let's extend our say power system to something that changes colors depending on the consumption. So the principle is the same. We have a way for querying the current consumption uh, on plugs. And in this case, instead of just querying the consumption for two plugs, we want to monitor all the metering plugs available on the networks, on both the networks. And this can be done by just querying the gateways and getting back all the devices and looking uh, for uh, metering devices. Um, and once we get the, the power, we want to drive the U lamp with a, a U that depends on the power. So basically, we want to turn the lamps uh, towards red if the consumption is high, and towards green if the consumption is low, okay? And since we aim at building something which is a little bit intelligent, we want to learn which is the maximum. So this is really easy. This is basically a maximum tracking, nothing more, okay? Okay, so how the architecture changes? The logic one basically changes in this way. We don't have the internet anymore. We don't need it because we don't exploit any services from the internet. We just use local services, uh, in particular the, ga the gateway, the gateway, and also the U bridge, and they are connected to the Omni area network. Um, and our module changes names, uh, changes name, but actually it's one module, still one module that we can unpack and it has almost the same structure as before because the, the working principle is the same. We have a core using two different clients for operating different devices. In this case, we, we will have the dog client for reading the consumptions and turning on and off the lamps. And we will have a U client for driving the lamps, okay? So what changes here is that there is one different client in the architecture, but in principle, the architecture is the same. So if we want to have a, a system that drives the U and say something, we just need to put here another client, okay? And the architecture is the same. This is called layered architecture. You see there are different layers. One base layer, uh, which is for connecting to the networks. One, uh, um, actually, sorry, the, the base layer is for sending messages. The, the uh, layer immediately up is uh, for interpreting the data coming from different networks, and then there is the logic layer, the one where our logic applies, okay? And this can be extended. So typically, uh, informatic systems tend to use layered architectures uh, because they allow isolating the, the several pieces, one from the other, okay? Um, okay, so let's have a look at the code. Let's start from the, the main part. It's almost the same as before. Uh, I'm just showing you the code because of time, but actually we can write it, it's the same. So here we still have the two gateways because we want to read the power from them and we create the gateways in the same way, okay? But now, since we want to uh, gather the power from all connected devices, we try to uh, devise a, a more uh, automatic method for getting, for getting the IDs and getting the power from each of the devices, okay? 
So instead of just querying the single device uh, with, the, with the ID that we know, uh, what we do is to basically compact the gateways into an array and then iterate over all the gateways, over all the devices for getting back the power, okay? So in this case, we start preparing an array of gateways, which are all the dog gateways that we want to query. And basically it is composed by the two ones that we created. And then we need also to prepare a bridge, and this is uh, provided by the U client, which is basically a wrapper of the, the U uh, request that uh, we prepared uh, in the last lesson also. So it, uh, it works uh, almost in the same way with the dog gateway. So we have uh, this U bridge uh, object, basically, that points at the U bridge. Um, and we need just one bridge because we have one bridge here. And after that, we start preparing the list of plugs that we want to get from the gateways, and then we fill up the list. So for all gateways in our list of gateways, we exploit one of the client methods that provides back all devices of a given type. So here we want to get all the metering power electric devices, which are the, the, the plugs, the smart plugs that also measure energy and power consumption. And by calling that method, we get back uh, basically um, a dictionary of device description where each description corresponds to one metering power outlet, okay? So if we do this for both gateways, we get the list of all devices. And what we do is to store these lists under two different keys that allow us to identify which device is connected to which gateway, okay? So in this case, I'm just saying, okay, inside the metering plus dictionary, the key corresponding to the gateway URL contains all the devices of that gateway, okay? So this allows us to uh, control the devices singularly and to split up the consumption between different networks. Okay, then we set the initial, the initial maximum power to zero, which is actually our similar to our um, last total power, okay, in the last example. And then we start collecting the power. So basically we have all the devices, now what we need to do is to query the gateway and ask to the gate, okay, please give me the power for all these devices. So we need to iterate over the array of devices that we get back, and for each of the device ID, send the query to the gateway. And this is done here. Um, where we use this really simple cycle that tells, uh, for every gateway in the available gateways, compute the total power. This is a function, okay? So let's uh, have a look at this function. It is defined here. Basically, the function does the same operation we did before. So, given the gateway and given the list of, devi of the devices, iterates over the devices. You see here for device in devices.keys. So it gets the keys of the device uh, dictionary one by one. And for each key, which is basically the ID of the device, gets the status, okay? Extract the status into a float value and accumulates the power into a variable. This is done for every device. So we basically read all the plugs connected to the first gateway and we sum up the power. And the function provides back the value of the power. You see here, return total power. So by just calling the function, what we do is basically to query the one gateway for all the devices metering, which are of a metering type, and we sum up the power. And we get a total power consumption by gateway in this case. We do the same for the other, for, uh, if we do uh, first for the Z-Wave gateway, we do also for the ZB1. And we store the results in this uh, new array where basically we have the gateway identifier and the current power, total power consumed in the gateway. If we want to sum up all the power values to get the total consumption, we just need to use the sum function, which is a, a default function provided by the Python interpreter, where we just pass um, an array and the sum sums up all the values in the array. So it's uh, really quite easy. And the total power will be just the sum of all the uh, 
power we computed before, okay? Um, and we can print it. And once we get this information, we are ready to use the client for you. Until this moment, we're just using one part of the architecture. You know, our core just uh, talked to with the uh, doc client for getting information back. Now we need to use the other client for setting up the lights depending on the power consumption, okay? Since we have the power consumption, what we need to prepare, basically, it's a mapping between the current power value and the U of the lamps. And we already know that a green U corresponds to a value uh, given to the U parameter of the uh, U lamps of uh, 25,500, okay? This is given uh, in, the, in the UAPI documentation, basically while the red U can either be zero or the maximum value, which is 65,535, okay? Um, we use the latest one so that we have a, a, a larger uh, set of U values. And what we need to do is to basically map a value between zero and the maximum to a value which is between uh, 25,500 and 65,535. And then we send that value as a U for the lamps. So for computing this U, we use a function because we will, we will be computing the U many times, once for one gateway, one for the other, one for the total power. Every time we perform a, a, a query on the gateways for getting the power. So let's have a look at the, at the function. We have the right value, which is 65,535, uh, the green value. We have the ratio between um, the maximum power we detected till now and the total power, and this uh, enables us to learn, which is the value that corresponds to the red color. We start uh, with zero, so initially zero is red, because it's the maximum power we had, and um, If the maximum power is greater than zero, so we have something to compare with, um, we can compute exactly the U that we need to set up on the lamps. And this is done by basically uh, computing first the ratio between the current power and the maximum power, and this ratio can be a maximum one, okay? The only case in which this ratio can be more than one is when the uh, maximum power is lower than the current power. In that case, we just put one, that means uh, um, red, basically, okay? And uh, we will have some part of the code in the, in the, in the main function that will uh, update the maximum power to the current one, okay? So that's why here there is uh, this minimum between one and the ratio. So that if the ratio is uh, less than one, it will be that the current power is less than the maximum power we've seen and we can uh, easily set up the color. Otherwise, we just set the color at red because we get the maximum value seen. And this is the learning part, basically. This plus uh, the, the part that stores the maximum power. Um, once we get the ratio, what we need to perform is the computation that given a value of the ratio, uh, computes the value of the U. And basically, it's a kind of proportion. So what we need to do is to start from the green U and then multiply the range between the green and, uh, and the color, and the red color, by the ratio. And we will get the result in here. That's it. So the function does exactly this operation and provides back the result, so that here, where we, uh, we call this compute u, we provide the total power, the current maximum power, okay? And we get back the u the U that we need to set on the lamp. So, we just need to set it. And to set the U, we can exploit the bridge client, and there is a particular function on the client, which is basically a wrapper for uh, an HTTP request that we already seen, um, which is set U, that uh, given the uh, ID of the lamp we want to set, sets the uh, U value at the one we want. In, the, in this case, at the one computed by using the function, okay? 
This is just a bug print in the currently computed U. And then what we do also is to split up the power feedback uh, according to the different gateways. So in this first instruction, we just printed the total power. So basically we just use the lamp number one to show the total power. Um, the second one uses the other two lamps that we have for showing the power of each network, of each gateway. And to do that, basically, what it does is to call the same function on just the consumption part pertaining to, the, to a given gateway. And we have it because we stored the power, the total power by gateway inside the, uh, a dictionary, basically. Okay, so here we have this four cycle, which iterates over all the gateways and um, computes the U given uh, the total power for that gateway, okay? Finally, before uh, restarting to measure everything, we need to update the maximum power. So if the current maximum power is lower than the current total power, then we need to learn it. This is a new maximum. So we need to store the current total power into the maximum power. And this is, okay, learn is a bit too uh, optimistic term. This is just a maximum search, but actually it's the learning part of our uh, system. And then we will sleep for a while, for example, two seconds, and restart back. And in this case, uh, this system runs forever. We have this while true. So it runs until we just stop the process. So let's try to run it and see if it works. Mm. You see here, all the colors set up to red because this is the maximum, okay? And now if I turn this down, then they all go to green basically. And if I like this back, and wait for a while for getting the power, you see here that this green one is the one corresponding to the ZB gateway, which is actually not connected to anything because it's not working, so we got zero, okay? And these two have the same color, almost the same color. This is a little bit lighter than this, but, um, and they are provided the feedback respectively for the total power and for the power coming from the Z-wave. So what changes if I just, let me try, unplug my laptop from here and try to plug it here. So now the power should change. And if the power changes, let me take the adapter. If the power changes, the red color should be adapted also to the new maximum power, which is hopefully higher than the one of the lamp, or maybe lower. Let's check. Let's light it up. Let's have a look here. Actually, it is lower. So, in this case, the red always corresponds to 45 watts, which is the maximum, but the lamp changes to a kind of light violet because we have a different power consumption. Okay? And if I put there another uh, load which is higher, then the red will change. Okay? Okay. So more or less, this is all for uh, for this first part of today, and uh, the code is on uh, GitHub. You can download it. Um, okay. Uh, sorry, this address here. You have also the slides on uh, on the website and the link on the website, so you can ch check it out and uh, have a look at the solution. And we will have this bench in the lab. 
uh, from the first Monday after uh, the holidays uh, of uh, Easter, okay? And um, so that you can experiment with the, uh, with, uh, with this hardware and all the things connected. And of course, with a ZB network working, not the live today, okay? Okay, that's it for this first part. Let's have a break. <laughs>